From the top of these snow-covered summits, a world unfurls before us. Nature, generous and marvelous, astonishing, bewitching. The stone and ice giants are there above our heads, dominating us, fascinating us, pulling us to them. An incontestable natural barrier, an immense smoking pyramid. Here is Mount Everest, Sagamatha, in the country that we call Nepal. Dawa Dashiri Sherpa is considered today to be one of the best long-distance runners of his generation. A Nepalese national, he lives in Switzerland and has become a symbol of success in his country, as well as an icon of the world of European trail running. Ten of the twelve highest summits of our globe are found in Nepal. Squeezed between the two economic giants of India and China, the Nepalese population is made up of many ethnic groups. There are more than 30 different peoples. The Sherpa are one of the smallest of these ethnic groups. They live mainly in Khumbu, at the foot of Sagamatha. Settled for 30 years in Nepal, Henry Sigai, a writer from Grenoble and Himalayan climber, lives in Kathmandu. He married a Sherpa woman from Pangbash in Kombu. He talks to us about this people, the Sherpas, that he knows so well. <laughs> the Sherpas really live in a very small world. It's the size of a small English county about 40,000 people. Where do they come from? They're Tibetans, from the southeast of Tibet, the northeast of Nepal. They lived in a province then, and it is thought they were driven out by the Mongols. The invaders forced them to flee. It may have been because of religion. Tibet was subject to the ancient religion of Bon. And it may be that the Sherpas were already followers of the Nyangmapa religion, which was one of the first Buddhist cults, Buddhism which came from India. These Sherpa left their Tibetan province and came down to Nepal. They came through a pass which is called the Nyangpa, and they came to the area known as Kumbu. Kumbu is their region. It's made up of small valleys, which start about 3,500 meters up and rise towards the foot of Sagamatha, Mount Everest. They settled there, and some of them came down further and colonized the Solo region. Everyone who came was looking for land which could be cultivated, as well as better temperatures than those in Kumbu. And when Solo was full, they settled in Kumbu. This people who live in environments and regions which are very different from each other are quite varied. But if we take the Sherpas of Kombu, for example, between 3,500 meters in altitude and 5,500 meters, there are people living at 5,500 meters. So take a child, a Sherpa child, 
He's born at an altitude of 4,000 meters. His heart and his lungs adapt to the lack of oxygen and therefore to the altitude, to the cold, to the harsh conditions, to the lack of roads. And this child will run, but he won't run on flat ground. He's going to be running on very steep slopes, uphill and downhill, running on stones. This is a people with very unusual physical capacities, if you compare them to us. A young Sherpa at the age of five years old will carry a small bag and he'll bring wood back from the forest with his mother. He'll go and get water and the jerry can contains a minimum of 10 litres, often 20 litres of water. So you often see children carrying 20 litres of water with water pouring down their back when it's minus 10 degrees Celsius. So they're a tough lot. There are people who have got a head start on us. We're at Sway and Bodna, an important Buddhist spiritual centre. This stupa is one of the places of pilgrimage for Tibetan monks, but also a destination for many Sherpas who leave Kombu and its freezing temperatures during the winter. At our feet is the city of Kathmandu, an oppressive and intriguing city that is sometimes spellbinding. This city now has more than two million inhabitants. Kathmandu is the religious and political capital of Nepal. Historically known as Kantapur, the Nua were the first to settle in the valley of Kathmandu in the 11th century. The influence of Hindu architecture is omnipresent. Nowadays, in Kathmandu, the Hindus and the Buddhists live side by side. The religions mingle, as if to better confront the poverty, which is close by at every street corner. But the diversity of the Nepalese people is its greatest wealth. It is this tolerance between different peoples that has allowed the Sherpa to settle, to become integrated and to develop. Dawa Dashiri is a Sherpa, a long-distance trail runner, world-renowned and considered to be one of the best at this sporting discipline. He has won the greatest races in the world, the Ultra Trail of Mont Blanc, the Annapurna Mandala Trail, the Tachimbi Raid, the Templiers and twice the Himal Race in Nepal. These are perhaps the two most important victories to him. He's here in Kathmandu for the first race which he will organize, a trail lasting 14 days crossing Solo and Kumbu. Starting from Jiri, lying at 1,200 meters altitude, he has designed an itinerary that goes to Kalapatha at 5,600 meters altitude, close to the Everest base camp. An itinerary crossing more than 300 kilometers with an uphill climb of more than 19,000 meters and downhill sections of 18,000 meters. A real exploit, a Himalayan race in the land of the Sherpas. Fifty runners have come to attempt the adventure of the Solo Kumbu Trail. <laughs> the Solo Kumbu Trail will rapidly climb to high altitudes, approaching 5,600 meters. Acclimatization is an important advantage, for the human body can adapt to altitude when the climb is made progressively and slowly which will not be the case in a race such as this, since the aim is always to go faster. This can cause problems for the runners, which, although minor, can become dangerous or even deadly. There's no reason for any major problems except perhaps infections. 
people get bronchitis, uh, they suffer from the altitude, and this leads to a problem directly related to the altitude, like a pulmonary or cerebral edema. It's always through a lack of oxygen, because the more you go up, the more the pressure drops, and the body has to make do with less oxygen. In the case of hypnoxia, at first the body's cells start to swell, and then, in the second stage, they begin to burst. That's the simple explanation of mountain sickness. Liquids go to places that they shouldn't be in. A pulmonary edema is the presence of liquid in the lung, with the additional complication of inflammation. The exchange between the air in the lungs and the blood doesn't happen anymore. The first treatment for all these pathologies is to descend, either walking or in a hyperbaric chamber. The Solokumbu Trail is the time for Dawa to discover the beauty of his native Solokumbu. But it is also an opportunity for the runners to run the trails of his childhood and to discover the life of the Sherpas. There. That's my parents' house. And beside it is the house of my brother, who died at Talishapa in 2004. <laughs> Dawa's cousins still live in the house of Tuxindu and he is returning there after six years away. Before I went to Switzerland, where the windows are, there was only plastic. There wasn't any wood either, the walls were bare. There was wood outside, so I remade the windows. I saw shutters in Switzerland, in a chalet, that closed like this. I made these shutters, and like that you can fold them. I made this little cupboard too. But if I hadn't, there was just this sort of thing to put corn and wheat. His mother now lives in Kathmandu, in a small apartment. Since her son began to run, she has kept all the trophies, awards, and the news stories about his victories. <coughs> Nowadays, Dawa's brothers and sisters meet at Kathmandu for family gatherings. We fixed here afterwards, with the kitchen upstairs. This is where my parents made the fire. Below there was a pipe and there was a fire plate in it. In the fire plate there was earth to make the fire in. My father died just here. He was ill, close to the fire, and he died lying here. One day when I came home, he said to me, I don't feel well at all, you'll have to go and get some money from someone, lower down, that I loaned it to a few months back. So I went off to get the money, it took some time, because the person didn't have the money straight away. And when I got home, my father had died. My mother said to me afterwards, your father said at the end that if you wanted to, you could stay in the house.
at the fireside, a light just to heat the tea. Dawa talks about the start of his racing. I started running in Nepal in 1994. I took part in the second Himalayan marathon. In the first one, I only made three stages. At the fourth stage, I got very sick and had to give up. The second time I took part, I finished third. Because I'd never run before and because I'd finished third, people asked me if I wanted to go to Europe. At the time, I met Annie. Thanks to Annie and other runners, I went to Switzerland. I spent three months there the first year, and then, while running, I made the acquaintance of the immigration police. The second year I stayed six months, because they told me, since you're running, we'll give you a visa for three more months. So I stayed six months. The third year I stayed nine months. I've been in Switzerland permanently since 1998. I'm happy. It's quite special for me to be here. Because I lived here for quite a long time. And that brings things back. My mother doesn't live here anymore, and my father's been dead for 15 years now. I'm seeing all my nephews and nieces again. It's a good thing for me. And I can share that with my friends. As a child, Dawa, with his mother and his brothers, looked after the herds of yak and nak in these alpine pastures. This place, called Beni, is at more than 4,000 meters altitude, some hours walking away from Taksindu. The Yursa, a Nepalese word for alpine pastures, rise here to over 5,500 meters. When I came here, I stayed with a friend, and I stayed a year and a half with him. Then my father bought half of this house over here. I stayed here three and a half years. Follow me and I'll show you around. All day long we work, but when the work is finished, I went out, a little physical activity for my personal training. At the monastery school, at first you learn the alphabet. When I came here, we began to learn to recite prayers. And that's very hard. It's hard because it isn't just reading and writing, you have to learn by heart. What I learned was respect for nature, respect for others, and self-respect. Then, later on, I learned prayers and stories. After spending seven years in monasteries, the time came for Dawa to choose his future life to remain as a monk or to go back to freedom. I left for Kathmandu. From 1991 to 2001, that was already 10 years. 18 years. I was lucky enough to meet the organizers of the Himalaya Marathon. It was organized by a Swiss and a Frenchman. In the Longtown Valley, they were looking for local runners. My brother was the cook. He asked me if I wanted to take part in the race. At the time, I'd never run. I practiced martial arts and physical activities for my personal training. 
Et puis, bah, j'ai dit, j'ai jamais connu, mais pourquoi pas, j'ai dit. Since that day, I've carried on with racing, and I've mixed with runners, men and women. Since then, I've always raced. The first time I ran was in 94. I only finished three stages. I was very sick. And I ended up in a hyperbaric chamber and had to abandon the race. In 95, I finished third. And I met my wife, Annie. And all my runner friends. And they invited me to Geneva and to France. And there were lots of little races, and I said, why not? At the time, I didn't speak a word of French. All I knew how to say was... Bonjour. In order to meet Dawa, now you have to go to Geneva, when he isn't running, in a building company. Well, it was about 10 years ago, a business associate who knew Dawa and who had run with him in Nepal contacted me to introduce Dawa. In fact, I'd never heard of him. I had a meeting with him and it went really well. Dawa's vision, something happened when he talked. When it was suggested that I employ him, even though Dawa's profile isn't the same as the personnel in our place, I don't think that there's any other Nepalese in construction in Switzerland. But the story got to me. And I agreed to take him on for a trial at first. And in the end, he fitted in well to the business. He's been working for us for 10 years. He has a job as a mason. And his job involves renovation, boxing and concreting. I'm what they call multifunctional. I do a bit of everything. Boxing, unboxing, concreting, I give a hand, a helping hand with the concreting. Sometimes I work with an established team, and sometimes I'm independent. I give a hand here and there. I do a little bit of everything. Sometimes on the scaffolding, sometimes in renovation. I work occasionally with the civil engineers putting up works, roads. If not that, then most of the time I'm working on buildings like this one, for construction. When we're together, somebody says Dawa's name, something happens straight away. It makes us happy. That's because of the positive image and the harmony that comes off his personality. Everyone likes to follow what he does. If Dawa wins a race, we're happy. If Dawa doesn't win, we're still happy. If he doesn't win the race, he's won anyway in terms of the applause. I've been at race finishes where it was complete craziness. Dawa, for our staff, means pleasure. He's a happiness machine. That happiness, Dawa has decided to distribute in his country as well. At Mira, his father's village in Solo, a monastery opened 14 years ago. It is directed by his cousin, who is the head lama. To make life easier for the monks and to express his gratitude to the monastery school, which instructed and educated him, Dawa has been collecting funds to allow the monastery to develop. 
Oh, okay. Don't come here. The Monastery of Mera is a Nyangma Pa monastery, one of the first Buddhist cults which came from India, which is also known as Buddhism of the Red Bonnets, which has several differences from the Buddhism of the Dalai Lama, Gelugpa Buddhism. I have been the head lama of the Mera Gumpa for 14 years. I decided to become a monk because, when I was young, I wanted to help others. I learned Buddhism in several gompas, going to Bodnath or traveling to Bhutan. Now I travel to gompas around the world to teach Buddhism to others and to collect funds for the development of Buddhism. When he was young, Dawa practiced a lot of sport and trained in martial arts. He often came to see me at the monastery, and we talked a lot about Buddhism. Dawa was a bright child. He always wanted to do something. He wasn't sad, rather joyful and good. That was help has made it possible to build rooms for the monks at the Mira Monastery. Before, they had nowhere to sleep, and they made their beds in the gompa. Dawa's help has led to the construction of a school and a refectory.
At the monastery school, we needed more classrooms. We could have over 50 students, but we don't have enough classrooms and rooms to house them. Thanks to Salakumbu Trail, Dawa will make it possible for us to build. There will even be electricity and running water. The Solokumbu Trail has permitted Dawa to raise sufficient funds to pay for the work essential to the smooth running of monastery life and of the monastery school. More than 30 monks benefit from the instruction in this school. Often coming from poor families, the children who enter the monastery are looked after and it's an opportunity for them to advance socially at the same time as they help others with prayers. I'm happy to help. Somehow I think it's not an error. It's not pride. I'm proud to be in good health. Even if I don't have much, I try to share that with people who have nothing at all. And about that I'm proud. If I'm able to, I'll do as much as I can to help under all conditions. It's not simply because it's the Sherpa people. It's not simply because it's my family. But if I can, I will try to help everyone. There, wherever I am. I don't think to keep a little bit back for myself. It's not my way. Since I was very small, I've never thought like that. Today is today. If I can share something with others, it's happiness. A moment of happiness. <laughs> They're happy to see people who come from the outside world. I hope those people are also happy to see them and to share that little moment. Even if it's just a cup of tea that you share together, that's happiness for me. Progressively, the Solokumbu trail caravan leaves the places of Dawa's childhood to arrive in the high cold lands of Kumbu. Kumjung is the old regional capital of Kumbu at 3,900 meters altitude at the foot of the sacred mountain of Kumba Ila. It's one of the last typical Sherpa villages. At Kumjung, there's a school financed by Sir Edmund Hillary in 1953, the conqueror of Everest. He undertook the construction of this school to give the children an education which was quite different from that given in the monastery school. The children learn Nepalese, maths, geography, and especially English. Hello. <laughs> 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 
To get to the school of Kumjung, the children walk for up to three hours every morning and every evening. Lessons start at nine o'clock and finish at five o'clock. I'm getting old now. It's hard. Dawa Dashiri Sherpa follows the trails leading to the summits with serenity. He knows he owes everything to his instruction. With the Solukumbu Trail, Dawa means to let his country be discovered by the paths of his childhood. He is also trying to communicate his values in order to help the Sherpas and allow his country to be better understood. On ne va pas remonter pour rien. Allez, mon ami Daniel. C'est ce grand moment. Merci d'avoir. Bien, bien été. Sans toi, je ne serais pas là. Allez. Allez. Ouais. D'une façon générale, on, on, on soutient Dawa dans son. Dans Generally, we support Dawa in his racing. Euh, And more especially, in the organization of this first race de in his country. Chez lui. Euh, he really knew how to convince us when he suggested this project. Projet which involves the runners. We can also follow the walkers, of which I am one, and I've really enjoyed following this trek. We said to ourselves that we could make a special effort to help them. We brought some wonderful pictures back ourselves and memories which we're going to share with all the partners. Des souvenirs qu'on va pouvoir faire partager à tous les collaborateurs. Bienvenue tout le monde à Paul Patar. Merci d'avoir. Merci. Le Solokumbu Trail leads the runners here. It's really majestic. It's a bit of a shame to go past here running because you don't have time to look at everything and see everything. But it's really worth it.
Like Dawa, the Sherpas know to use their territory to develop themselves nowadays. They're changing naturally, trying to become responsible for their land's development, Kumbu, to be able to finally leave an often difficult life behind. They want to leave their poverty behind because they have lived like animals. 20 years ago, when I was living in Kombu, it was like watching animals. No medicine, pain because there was no medicine, hard labor, no chance to reduce the work, no fire up there, the ground is frozen six months of the year, Fire was just for cooking. In Europe, in the Alps and the Pyrenees, at first they left their ungrateful land to live in the cities, like all the rural world. Because life in the city, even as a worker, was all the same, a level higher than the life they had in the country. So a lot of Sherpas came down to the cities. And what's happening now? Namche Bazaar, Paris, Porsche, Pangbosha, are becoming mountain stations. The Sherpas realize that they can earn money, that they can live well in these mountains. And once again, we see people coming to settle in these mountains, which had been deserted. It's the same phenomenon as in the alpine pastures for us. The pastures that was two or three times in summer for the cows. And now there are ski stations. For example, Ding Bosch used to have 10 inhabitants, and now there are 50 lodges. It's the same phenomenon as in the Alps. It's quite funny. C'est le même phénomène que dans les Alpes, c'est assez amusant. L'autre aspect, c'est que... And the other aspect of this is that they go past the bare essentials and imitate us. They're always going to want more. For example, my neighbor has a four-liter croc, so I want one that holds five liters. You can ask yourself where all this will lead. The Sherpas of Kumbu are now masters of their own destiny. Thanks to the conquest of Everest, they have been able to profit from the incredible support of the money they receive to accompany expeditions to the high peaks. High altitude porters, they now rule the business of the Nepalese Himalayas. The Sherpas are progressively coming down from their cold land and the younger generation wants a more peaceful life than that of their grandparents. For some time, the Nepalese government has given rewards to Nepalese climbers who try for records or summits. Whereas the generation of high-altitude Sherpas hated to climb summits that were higher than 8,000 meters, the young Sherpas now go to school and learn the practices of high mountaineering to become guides in large expeditions. They throw themselves into record-breaking. The fastest ascent of Sagamatha, Everest, is held by a Sherpa who took eight hours and 22 minutes for the climb. The prestige of these climbs and the attraction of money are the essential driving forces in this race for records. There's a limit to the development of the Sherpas all the same. They hold the reins of the mountain economy but are underrepresented in government and decision making. Nepal has been a democracy for a short while. This allows the Sherpa to rise to certain functions. There has been a Sherpa Minister of Tourism, but tensions with other ministries block the main changes that the Guide Association wants. Nepal is nowadays en route for development, hurrying to leave the Middle Ages to enter the 21st century. This can only happen by training and educating the younger generations, who are the country's future. Like all Sherpas, Dawa Dashiri is changing to reach a better state of being. The Buddhist monk, turned champion racer and mason, has succeeded in his bet. 
Je suis content. Je suis I am happy to be here and to show all this beautiful country to my friends. My friends who are almost my family. Runners are very close to nature, as am I. There is a very strong relationship between nature and runners. So many summits, considered by many to be incontestable obstacles, but which, in the eyes of wise Dawa Dashiri Sherpa, are only there to show us that there is always a path. With the Solokumbu Trail, Dawa wants to show us that even if the start is difficult, the road of life is long, and there are always passages which allow us to advance to Mount Ever Higher. <laughs>